Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dimitri. I, I'm with JetBrains. Some of you might have heard about us. We make developer tools, kind of have been doing it for like 15 years or something. So we recently came onto the uh, uh, C++ scene with a couple of tools. And one of those is C-Line. That's what you're looking at right now. This is not KDE. Uh, it's a cross-platform C++ ID for uh, well, currently supporting uh, Clang and GCC and uh, using CMake as uh, the, the build system. So I just wanted to show uh, what it's like to work, work in this kind of tool. I, I'm going to start by making a, uh, just an ordinary class. So uh, C-Line provides us all sorts of useful thingies for, for manufacturing classes. So in this case, I'll call a class person. So C-Line is uh, asking us like what type of extensions we want, and you can make groups of those. You can make it header only, and it also asks you what uh, uh, what CMake target you want to add this file to. So you, there are some options there. Once I uh, press OK, I get my header and the CPP. And by the way, these templates are customizable. So if you do prefer include guards, then uh, you can have those as well. Uh, in addition, we have the appropriate entries in the uh, CMake list, and we can sort of start working with this class. So for example, I can add a, a couple of variables, say uh, weight and height, and maybe I want uh, to calculate the body mass index based on that. So what I can do is I can just uh, define a uh, function uh, signature here, and C-Line is going to offer us options of actually implementing this function either uh, in place, meaning in the header file, or you can generate it in the uh, CPP file. So once I do that, I jump into the CPP. Here is my actual function. And here I can uh, return uh, weight divided by, let's say, height times uh, height, like so. So this is a bit of a problem because uh, I, my return type is void. So C-Line can kind of pick that up and it can tell us that, by the way, you know, do you want your uh, return type to change to double? And I press return and it gets changed here and obviously in the header file as well. So uh, C-Line also comes with uh, lots of refactoring. So for example, I can take this height times height. In fact, we have a shortcut for kind of expanding the selection. I can bring up a refactoring menu. And in this case, I can take it to a, a separate variable. So I can extract this product into a separate variable. Kind of, uh, a couple of options here, like I can make it auto, for example, or I can declare it as const with uh, a couple of keyboard uh, shorthand. Let's just uh, call this height squared. Uh, like so. But let's suppose that I want to have a general purpose function for squaring variables, multiplying a variable by itself and returning that. So once again, I can extend selection around height times height, and I can bring up a refactoring here to extract the entire method. So this method, uh, I'm going to call this square and uh, just press the uh, extract button. Uh, what this does is it basically adds a new member function called square, which is a const, as you can see here, and it returns height times height. But maybe I want height to be a parameter. Maybe this is a general purpose squaring function for whatever you feed it. So uh, for this, once again, I can bring up the refactoring menu. And here, what I can do is I can extract a parameter. So I can say that, you know, I have First of all, C-Line is asking me what kind of expression I want to extract. In this case, it's just height. Afterwards, C-Line is saying, well, by the way, you have two of those in your, uh, in your function body. So do you want to extract just, just one or both? So I'll replace both occurrences. And now I can give it a new name, like value, for example. So I have my uh, function for uh, squaring a value. And you also notice something interesting. We didn't have any arguments here beforehand because it was just returning high times high. But now re uh, C-Line has effectively inferred that this was the value that was being fed into the function. Therefore, after the refactoring, it's actually changed the uh, signature here so that it would uh, be called with height. And uh, an additional thing we can do is we can now uh, get this calculation of square of height and just uh, get it to replace height squared. So getting rid of height squared altogether, once again, you uh, bring up the uh, refactoring menu. And in this case, you can choose inline. So we inline the use of height squared, press enter, and now we're just using square of height and that uh, that uh, temporary variable is no longer being used. So let's jump uh, back into the header file. By the way, we have shortcuts for kind of jumping between declarations and definitions. And here, let's suppose that I, I'm not happy with the name person. I want to 
different name for this class. So I can bring up once again another refactoring code rename. And uh, here I can just type, let's say, human, for example. So this actually does a lot of changes because in addition to uh, performing the change of the symbol, so having human here and also having human here. In addition to that, the files got renamed. You'll see human.h here and human.cpp here as well. And uh, of course, in CMake lists, we also have the uh, appropriate renamings done as well. So I have my human class, but some of the things are grayed out, like why is it gray here? Why is the code gray here? Well, this is because C line goes off and it actually looks at uh, whether the things you wrote are being used somewhere. And if they're not, it's going to tell you about it. So let's see if we can uh, actually start using this human class somewhere. So I'm in here, let's say I type human. Okay, so uh, what happens is that C line, obviously it figures out that there is uh, no such type here yet, but it's saying, well, do you want to include human.h? So I press Alt Enter and I now have my uh, include statement up above, and then as I start typing the variable name, it's kind of suggesting that maybe I want human with a lowercase h, so I can uh, complete this, and then I can start using uh, the, uh, I can start using the class, so for example, I can uh, get, uh, get the BMI, we, we got code completion throughout the whole IDE, so just press return for something like this, and complete it, but the problem is that we haven't really initialized human with any kind of value, and let's actually do it in a more sophisticated way. So I'm gonna go into human. Now let's suppose that I want another class up the hierarchy to make an entire sort of inheritance hierarchy. So what I can do is I can go into the refactoring menu once again, and this time I can try and extract a superclass. So the idea here is that you can make a superclass and you can actually take some of the elements of the current class and sort of move them up the hierarchy. So in this case, I can go with uh, weight and height and just extract them. So what, uh, what oh yes, of course, let's, let's give this a name, like mammal, for example. All right, so. Uh, wait a little, and we have a bit of a problem here. You see, C line is smart enough to figure out that a private variable that was being used can no longer be private because it's now, you now need to use it in the uh, inheriting class in that BMI method. So it's saying, do you want to escalate visibility? Do you want to change these variables from private visibility to protected? And of course, I say yes, because if I don't, I'm gonna get some red code. It's not going to work. So now I have a base class called MAMO, and I have an inheriting uh, class called human. Now you'll see that uh, some of the files here are grayed out. So mammal.cpp and mammal.h, we just created them, but they're not part of uh, CMake just yet, so let's add them. So I have my source files variable here, and you'll notice that as I type things, so I'm typing mammal.cpp, I'm getting code completion here, and in addition to code completion, you can also see that it's kind of highlighted a little bit, so, uh, uh, C line actually uh, treats uh, the CMake files uh, very well, so you get things like code completion. So, for example, I can just go to mammal.h with a single shortcut, and here I am. So, what can we do in mammal? Because we want to initialize this class somehow. Well, one of the things we can do is we can actually go off and generate a constructor, for example. So, I can go into the generate menu, and you'll see that we have a couple of things for the kind of stuff that you might want to generate, like constructors, destructors, getters, and setters and lots of other stuff. So I want a constructor. Here it's asking me what fields I want to initialize. I can just select everything, uh, press OK, and here we go. I have my uh, constructor. Of course, uh, I now need a uh, similar constructor in human, so let's, uh, let's go into human. You'll notice that because C line does kind of uh, continuous code analysis, it's saying that, well, by the way, your base class doesn't have a default constructor anymore, so do you want to do something about it? And indeed I do, so I can press Alt Enter here, and one of the options is, uh, well, there are two options here. I can either make a default constructor in mammal, uh, or I can generate a matching constructor in human, so I press return, and here it is. I get a constructor which just calls the uh, base class constructor. So now that we, uh, now that we've got this, we can finally uh, navigate into main.cpp, and we have another issue here, another code inspection, because C line is saying, well, there is no such constructor. You basically have too few arguments. So this is where uh, we can actually uh, provide the uh, height and the width, like this, and that's it. And we can now sort of uh, start using this code. I'll actually run this and, and get our value, 24.5. All right, so um, in addition to uh, being able to do all these wonderful refactorings, we also provide tons of stuff like navigation and different visualizations of your code. So let's take a look at some of them. Now, in order to uh, make this a bit more interesting, I'm going to go 
into MAML. And by the way, notice we have different kinds of navigation options. So you can find something by class name, or for example, you can find something by file name. And we also support this camel humps idea. So if I type CML, uh, C line, basically what it does is it goes off into my code base and it looks at all the files which have the capital C, M, and L. So it finds uh, C make list this way, very useful. And yes, we can also search for uh, also search for symbols as well. So if I uh, want like height, for example, I can just type a few letters and if I press return, I get to the appropriate location. Okay, so I want another base class. So in addition to mammal, I'll have another uh, super class here. Uh, let's call it animal. I just extract it like this. I'm not gonna put anything in it because I just want to demonstrate something else. So once again, uh, one of the things we have to do is we, we have to get back into uh, CMake lists and add this uh, new file, so that would be animal.cpp and animal.h. All right, so now that we have this, one of the features that CLine offers is an ability to uh, visualize uh, inheritance hierarchies. So essentially we have a separate window which does a kind of tree-like rendering of who inherits from who. So in this case, I have a class called animal, and I can see that it has one descendant called mammal, and this has a descendant called human, and I can obviously double click on any of them to actually uh, find out what uh, uh, who, wh what the class looks like. And before you ask, yes, we do support you know multiple inheritance and diamond inheritance and you know virtual inheritance and all this all this other crazy stuff. So the alternative is like for for a human class, you can also open up this uh, this menu, but it's a, the human class doesn't have any subtypes. What you can do is you can uh, sort of invert the tree, and instead of looking at the descendants, you can look at the parents. So in this case, you have a view of who's the parent of human, it's mammal, and this has a parent called animal. In addition to uh, this kind of hierarchy, we have yet another hierarchy view. Let's go into uh, main.cpp. Another hierarchy view shows you uh, what you're including, what kind of headers are you including, and what do they actually contain. So here I can see that main.cpp includes human.h and iostream and string, and I can take iostream, for example, and I can sort of navigate and expand and expand and so on. By the way, another thing that we uh, do to help you visualize your code is the file structure pane. So uh, this, this little pane on the left basically shows you a kind of tree-based view of uh, your types as well as their members, and you can also sort of select elements and notice that when you do, the focus actually switches from one element to another. So uh, really convenient stuff, and, and we can actually, I think we can uh, select some, one of these. Yeah, so as I select something uh, in the hierarchy that I'm exploring on the left, I can see that it has some defines and some members there as well. And of course, uh, in these cases, if I double click any of them, I just open the appropriate file. So uh, this uh, has been a uh, rather small demonstration of CLI, and essentially you can uh, you can find, uh, you can grab a uh, free one month trial at jetbrains.com slash line. And by the way, if some of you are users of Visual Studio as opposed to, uh, you know, GCC and all that, then, then we have a different product called Reshop for C++, which kind of plugs into Visual Studio. And it does pretty much the kind of things that I've shown here uh, today. So uh, that's it. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, at the moment, I don't think we do. So the question was whether we have any features for expanding uh, uh, macros or uh, template definitions. I know that in the in the reshopper product that we have, we do have a way of uh, totally outlining the macro. My colleague is kind of raising the hand here. Maybe he'll correct me now. Well, I think I think we kind of uh, have to, more or less, in the sense that if it's going to be mainstream, then then it, it makes sense for us to do that. that. That's more, once again, a question to the developers. But but I think that uh, also. Uh, 
question here. So if we have the existing scenic project, can we just open the directory and expect this kind of behavior? So yes, if you have an existing CMAKE uh, project with CMAKE list, you just open it and you get pretty much all that I've shown here. Question over there? Well, I, I would say that it's, uh, it's more or less complete in the sense that, that we do have uh, everything that, that you might need and also, you know, pop-ups for helping you import stuff. So one final question. Do you have uh, Vim as well? There is a plugin for C-Line which specifically supports Vim. All right, that's it. We're out of time. Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, one last thing. Uh, we, JetBrains, we have a stand on the fourth floor, so if you have more questions, just come around and I'll help you out. Thanks.